on location at the Natural Living Expo in downtown Des Moines at the Polk County Convention Center. It's very well attended, many vendors, many exhibitors, lots of information. Welcome to episode 24 of Blue Green Fusion, Blue Collar Jobs, Green Economy. This episode is titled Breath of Life. I have some announcements, uh, community news, some headlines, and then the topic of the show. Uh, the first announcement is the Northern Plains and Rocky Mountain Consortium, the Green Jobs Conference. That's going to be here in downtown Des Moines at the Renaissance Des Moines Savory Hotel. That's 401 Locust Street, and it's going to be Tuesday, April 19th, starting at 8 o'clock a.m., running through Wednesday, April 20th, till 4.30 p.m. And so that involves the consortium that's researching the green economy. That involves Iowa, Montana, Nebraska, South Dakota, Utah, and Wyoming. Call 515-244-2151 for more information. You can also email john.good at iwd.iowa.gov for more information and how to register. The next announcement comes from Capital Crossroads. Uh, we talked about their visioning survey, the community input opportunities. The next opportunity to give information uh, and your thoughts on their planning for our Des Moines metro community is going to be April 26th at the Botanical Center. Time to be announced. Watch their, web web watch their website at capitalcrossroadsvision.com. Uh, the next announcement is the Iowa Renewable Energy Association Symposium and Exposition. That's going to be in Iowa City, Iowa, uh, April 28th through May 1st. And it's going to be at the Iowa Memorial Union at the University of Iowa. The topics of that symposium and exposition are going to cover alternative power vehicles, solar thermal and solar volt solar vo photovoltaic, energy efficiency, sustainable living, green building, wind, and you can get more information on that from uh, www.irenew.org, www.irenew.org is that web address. All right. Um, recommended for more announcements is the Greater Des Moines Partnership uh, website, which is DesMoinesMetro.com. They have a way for you to sign up for their newsletter. You get business and economic development news, lots of links to news articles, um, and information about their activities uh, that we discussed in a previous episode, including the trip to Washington, D.C., to discuss federal policy issues as they affect uh, the Des Moines area. Also good for information on what's happening in the Des Moines area is the Center on Sustainable Communities. Uh, they have plenty of information on sustainability and green issues. They have a full slate of programming for the spring and the summer. And there's ways that you can sign up to receive information from their newsletter uh, to your email address as well. For flood and water issues, land use policy, you can go to the Iowa Flood Center website, um, which may be iowafloodcenter.org, but you can always just Google that uh, name and then come to their website and see their programming as well. All right, so I did attend the Natural Living Expo. It was a couple of Saturdays ago. Uh, lots of information. I took some video. And then also I distributed information about Blue Green Fusion because I'm so proud of the show. And then I also took the opportunity to pick up some uh, information as well. 
So, so. What's your name? My name's Chad and Halfhill. Oh, nice to meet you. I'm with Indigo Dawn and Silent Rivers. Oh, okay. So we have three entities in one booth. Yeah, this booth is kind of a, a mix of different groups. This is uh, IDOLS, which is Iowa Department of Agriculture and Sustainability. Uh -huh. And um, I hope I got that right. And Land Stewardship, I actually. Okay. Um, and uh, Polk County Soil Water Conservation District, as well as uh, NRCS. And their, their, their focus is on rain gardens, native plantings, um, soil water, soil management, water management. Right in the middle here is on co-housing, so there's co-housing opportunities. We've been working with uh, uh, Turtle Farm co-housing community, and we're trying to bring together. They are bringing um, um, Charles Durrett to Des Moines in the central Iowa to talk about co-housing. He's one of the national leaders on it in July. And what's going to happen with that is we're going to see if we can build enough, a strong enough base of people in this metro area to look at possibly doing a co-housing community, okay. particularly on an organic farm. That's, the, that's what's exciting in that one. And so, and then of course, as you move over here, this is into Don's uh, pilot project. So this is um, Green in Maine. And Green in Maine is a, a project that focuses on taking old buildings, Main Street buildings that are in rural communities, some urban communities, and how do you take this mixed use masonry building and upgrade it with, you know, energy efficiency practices, storm water practices, best practices of different types throughout the building as a case study. And so we're, this is the old um, a rail trolleyway that went in front of the building back in the 1800s, in the early 19th, or 20th century. The uh, old glass, glass from the window. This is the old seal with the 1933 signature date. That's some of the old lighting fixtures. So, you know, but then this is our recycling signs, some of, some of them, you know, in terms of we site source separated everything. So it's a, it's a very comprehensive building looking at best practices and how do you, how do you teach people how to do that. Okay. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Lots of interesting things. For instance, I did pick up something from the Thousand Friends of Iowa. Uh, top 10 things adversely affected by poor land use decisions. And that's pretty interesting. Um, they discuss farmland, natural areas, urban centers, small towns, local businesses, uh, transportation systems, and then historic preservation, quality of life, community identity, and then taxes. These are all very relevant issues that get driven or guided by how we plan to use our land. Land use is not to be underestimated. It decides our infrastructure, like um, this uh, article says, it affects our quality of life. And if you do look around the Des Moines area and then even the greater Des Moines metro area, and then also attend the community planning, and input uh, strategizing sessions that we're having that uh, coming up. And another one that I'm going to talk about is with our uh, public transportation system. You can see that land use uh, affects virtually every aspect of our lives and our livelihood in the Des Moines area. So it's always very wise to pay attention to our planning and zoning uh, organizations and how that affects our infrastructure. Um, okay, so that was a very interesting information that I would definitely recommend uh, following up on. A uh, Thousand Friends of Iowa, you can go to, looks like www. Um, and here it says 100friendsofiowa.org. Maybe just Google that name and see what website you come up with. And you might be able to access this particular um, article, which I thought was very thought-provoking. They also had something called Principles of Smart Growth, and that's also from the same booth. Um, let's see, create range of housing opportunities and choices, create walkable neighborhoods, encourage community and stakeholder collaboration, foster distinctive, attractive communities with a strong sense of place, make development decisions predictable, fair, and cost-effective, mixed land uses, preserve open space, farmland, natural beauty, and critical environmental areas, provide a variety of transportation choices, 
uh, strengthen and direct development towards existing communities and take advantage of a compact building design 